What we are saying is have a heart. We've got to be able to regenerate our economy. People who are kind, people are cruel, but that's life. You can be about I'm fine with that. I, I think we can over labor the, the point that this is a problem of integration. For me, drawing on Debbie's issue about the class uh, related aspect of it, it's more a problem of uh, wages and conditions, mm. which in a capitalist society, as is ours and you know all the rest of the world apart from Cuba and uh, North Korea, yes, Korea. Um, the grievances that the workers have and the problems that the, the government has to deal with and the clear position of the government on, this is, on these issues is not so much in relation to how do we integrate these people, it's more how do we exploit these people the cheapest possible price for the, the, the highest uh, uh, amount of uh, uh, return from them. You know, we Isn't this a commercial question that if our companies, mm. rather than the gov government, wants to be competitive mm. and if they have to compete with countries in the region, mm. there has to be certain benchmarks mm. that mm. we cannot exceed or we'll be killing ourselves. Yes, okay. That would be true if it weren't for the levy. You see, the levy raises the unit cost by almost 50% for but workers. But isn't there a reason for the levy? Yes, but it doesn't work. <coughs> because as Debbie said to earlier... To discourage the employment of foreign workers, yes, it doesn't work? It doesn't work. Because what happens what is that... the situation with domestic workers? How is it that if, we, if they reduce the levy, does that mean that Singaporeans would rush in and take those jobs? It's not discouraging mm. the, the hiring of migrant workers because no one else would take those jobs. Yes. The same mm. thing with the construction or the shipyards. Mm. If you eliminated the, the levy right away, would there be Singaporeans who would take that mm. jobs? Okay, are we maybe, maybe can I... We are, yes. Can yes, I yes, contribute yes. a little bit on yes. the salary wise I think? Yes, yeah. let's come back to the <coughs> condition of the workers. Yes. Yeah. Right, to my opinion is that I don't think mm. Singapore are paid $18 per workers. Mm. Let's say Indian and Bangladesh going overseas to work, where can they go? Country like Middle East, Malaysia, I think these are the quite similar country that have allowed them to be work there. If we have $18 sink and you compare to Malaysia, I think they are definitely better off than Malaysia. Mm. If they go to Middle East, I think they don't get, it's, it's quite equivalent. I think our $18 salary is quite close to Middle East as well per day. Okay. We are not that far away. <coughs> I mean, to my personal opinion. And today, I think uh, most of the foreign workers in Singapore, $18 is the starting pay. So you're saying I on a say global basis, we are not ungenerous? We, we, are, we are not. I don't think we are that far away compared. Okay. We are definitely better than Malaysia. And it would be wrong for us to give more than we need to because then we become uncompetitive? Yes. No. Okay. So what you're now saying is that although we, they are getting 14% of the average Singapore pay at yes. $18 an hour, you're now arguing a day, a day, a day. A day. Yes. You're now saying that that is, on a global basis, not necessarily unfair. Yes, mm. I, I personally think that it's not. You know, you're you're right. Eighteen dollars is the starting point for a lot of for a lot of workers, and that I think that's brought quite low because of various other costs that the employer has. So because I deal a lot with workers who are not allowed to work for a long period of time, many of them join the illegal workforce, and they're able to get sixty, eighty, a hundred dollars a day. So this is work that they do illegally. And this is the same work that others are doing legally. They're working alongside legal workers. So why is it that the employer can pay them, say, a hundred dollars a day? Is that right? A mm. hundred dollars a day to do the same work that someone else is doing for eighteen dollars basic a day. Mm. It's because that employer isn't burdened by the levy and the insurance and the housing and the food. But also, that man is happy to work for $100 a day without those things because he has job mobility. The $18 a day, you're not allowed to change jobs. If you're dissatisfied with anything, you can't change. But the man who's working illegally, provided he's not caught, can switch jobs. And you can't use that argument because the whole economic system, the whole industry system may collapse if you're saying that. Uh, that is a better situation because... I'm not saying it's a yeah. better situation. I'm talking about people who might be working continuously and I've known in quite a number of people. Yeah. Now, are we being anecdotal? Yes, well, but the, it becomes statistics when you hear the numbers of people she's worked with over the five years. We have 600 so. individuals every month coming to us. 
none of them are allowed to work. And of those, I don't know how many are working, but I know probably about half of them are working illegally. Now there's another class of worker, which is someone who's, he pays for a work permit and then he works freelance. And he also will be making at least, wouldn't you say mm. the release workers release will work, make yeah. at least $100 a day. They, a day to pay every month. they have to pay about $1,000 every month to their employer to keep their work permit live, to sure. keep it valid. Mm. But so they must be making well over that. Okay. So I I'm think this we have to leave, yeah. Are, are available. Sure. And I, I take your point. Yeah. And it could be valid, but I think it has to be validated empirically mm -hmm. because otherwise it's just anecdotal. Mm -hmm. But can I move on away from wages now? Okay. Are we saying that we are generally agreed that although they may be getting less than what uh, they ought to be getting and that uh, the levy may be frustrating the ability to pay them more, we're also saying that on a regional basis, we're not necessarily unfair, and from a business viewpoint, we may not want to pay them more because then it disadvantages our business people, not the government. But can I move on to another area, which is the working conditions? Um, hmm. In this respect, are we uh, being fair to them? Some of uh, employers, worker mostly complain their employer, their supervisor, the super supervisor, company supervisor. Oh, the supervisors, yes. Mm, they, they treat them very badly. So, our country, Bangladeshi worker, also they like very much Singapore rather than Malaysia, Middle East, because uh, Singapore uh, have uh, like very nice country, pay more, but uh, living cost also very high. That's why work hard. The long run, they're not happy with the eighteen dollars. Maybe after two years work, they get twenty dollars. But they are still better off than if they worked in Malaysia. Yeah, they're happy to work. Okay. Then the Malaysia, then the Middle East country. I have experienced that some of worker like uh, the first time come, they cheated, they go back come again. Why they come? They like here. Yeah. They work. And earn money. If they have good company, pay regularly, they have earn good earn. Okay. But if they... Uh, now, like uh, I have experienced over the last few years that at least 30 percent worker now, they come, they cheated. Because now, some of the local employer, they just open the company to hire foreign worker to just making money. How do they make money from the workers? They, they have the middlemen in Bangladesh, Singapore, Bangladeshi agent. So they have a uh, good term and if worker come, everybody know that they pay $5,000, 6000 to come mm. Singapore. Mm. And who collects that money? Collects money like employer take from the middlemen, middlemen take, take from the direct from the worker. So this is the way the worker saying that actual employer pay them a lower salary because of uh, they have to pay a high levy. And an employer pay levy from where? They pay, pay from the worker money. Yeah. Hmm. And I have to say that. And so after two months, three months, there is no job. Okay. Send back the worker. So I think is uh, they cannot. The boss cannot blame to work is uh, levy high. That's why I I cannot up money because if levy high, then he also uh, um, and uh, and mm -hmm. he also expect to more money from his contractor. I think that is not not problem for boss but they will blame worker is that is problem they, they you're saying that the high levy is used an ex excuse to suppress the wages of yeah. the workers um, but again you, you despite that you find that the workers prefer to work in Singapore than in the neighboring countries yeah. but you made a very important point that you have 30 percent and that's a very substantial number 30 yeah. percent of the people abuse the workers so they take advantage of the workers they cheat the workers your cheater could be certain areas like, okay, example, 
that you you have been promised to work in the so-called electrician's work. But when you come here and you end up, you do rebar, yeah. hard work. No, so yes, do you do you consider it? No, actually, what, what he's know? talking mm -hmm. about is when because he has good connections mm -hmm. with Bangladesh, and he hears all the mm -hmm. time about people who've paid. The, the agent fees, which can be as high as ten thousand dollars, and they never leave Bangladesh because someone has taken that money, and that recruiting agent is working together with the employer here. We also see many oh. men who have paid the wages, but that's, paid that I, amount, I think that's very come here. insidious. You're saying that it, it, they're it making happens. money out of the worker Absolutely. not because they want them to Absolutely. work, but they cheat them out of the agency fees. But unfortunately, unfortunately whether it's from India or Bangladesh, wherever they go employment to Malaysia, they go Malaysia, they paid to get job. Yeah. Whether in Singapore. Yes. So we, I think at so the uh, end of the day, this is what's been practiced for many years, mm, what I understand mm. from that. And yeah. this is the problem, and this is okay. exactly mm. the problem, that for the first job, men will pay eight to 10000 to obtain that job. If they work for one year, they haven't made that amount. No, they back. need mm. something like 17 and a half months. Two years also. No, I, I think, I, I their think sometimes cost. I, I think two years. So if they're sent back within mm. six months, they are deep in debt. Maybe, maybe you need to go in debt a little bit to know that. Workers who come to Singapore to work in construction industry, they need to pass a test before they come. Those training centers mm -hmm. in Bangladesh are also also serve as recruiting uh, recruiting agents. They're the ones that offer the job placement. So many of the companies here will work together with those training centers, will source their workers there. So the money that they pay to the training center is also part of their placement fee. We've also found many men who earn that BCA certificate, either well, if the company itself pays for that here in Singapore, the company very often doesn't release that to the worker when he goes home. So he's not able to use that training that he under that he's undergone to come back again.